Running unopposed with AEW Dynamite preempted due to the NBA playoffs, WWE NXT posted its strongest viewership since November on Wednesday night. There's good news and bad news in these numbers. Last night's NXT go-home show for TakeOver 30 averaged 853,000 viewers, up from 619. The show drew last week. So over 200,000, almost a quarter million extra viewers this week with no AEW. Rating 18 to 49, 0.24. which was up from last Wednesday's 0.16. Obviously, all that is good news. I know you NXT WWE fans don't want to hear the bad news, but I'm afraid I've got to tell you the bad news. Mm. So in 18 to 34, not 18 to 34 men, not 18 to 34 women, combined men and women, 18 to 34 Mm-hmm. The show did a 0.09. Ooh. Two weeks ago, with head to head competition from AEW, another wrestling show, they did 0.11. They fell from a 0.11 to a 0.09 with no competition. So we've said this before. It's it's hitting you in the face like a, with a hammer. When you see these 18 to 49 numbers for NXT, and 18 to 49 was up here. They did a .24 in 18 to 49. It's really 35 and above, 36 and above. That 18 to 49 is nobody 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, blah, 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 blah. It's all people above the age of 35 under the age of 35 under the age of 35 nobody wanted to watch nxt even without dynamite on the air a 0.09 in 18 to 34 nobody under the age of 35 is watching this show it's astounding and you know in the short term in the short term well they're you know they're above 35 is is good enough that they're they're at least you know i mean they were off the chart last week which is i mean crazy but at least they charted this week but their audience is so old it's not even like there's no little kids growing up to be fans there's no little kids there's nobody in high school no teenagers there's no young adults I mean, dude, there's nobody under the age of 35 watching NXT. What's going on here, and how can this be remedied? That's the big question. You reap what you sow. This has been coming for a long time, and we talk about it every single day as to the reasons of why it has happened, and now the numbers are just kind of like just just meshing everything out there. So, I mean, what can you say? Uh, NXT, it's... It's a good, solid show, but much like WWE's problems across the board, where are the larger-than-life superstars? Where is the excitement? There's some more coherent storytelling, but even in NXT, you have things that are head-scratching and don't make any sense. I mean, the Rhea Ripley situation was a prime example of you know the, one of the biggest problems they had with, with NXT. Forget about putting it up against AEW and the fact that you cannibalized yourself that way and put so much undue pressure on the product that way. I mean, these are all things that have been self-caused and have been coming for a long, long time with them. It's just, that's just the way it goes. Person here says, listening to the Brian and Vinny show last night, I realized how big of a geek Dakota Kai still is. Forget her past as a baby face. She's booked horribly even as a heel. Do you remember how she became the number one contender? She barely beat Rhea Ripley with help from Mercedes in a 20-minute match where Rhea beat her up for 18 minutes. That is what happened. And then last night she went out there and she went toe-to-toe with someone who I don't think we've ever seen on TV before. And then when the match was over, Raquel Gonzalez came out and first Io Shirai beat up Dakota and then Gonzalez made the save and then there was a comeback and then she destroyed her again. So Dakota got nothing against, zero nothing zilch against Io Shirai without help from Raquel. And Raquel is not the one getting the championship match. Dakota is. When we come back, I'm going to give you the lineup for NXT. And we'll talk about all of the other shows this weekend as well because there's like 
50 of them. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Observer Live, uh, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Well, here you go, everybody. Here's this weekend. Tonight, SmackDown on Fox with the Thunderdome. Show's going to open up with, of all things, Vince McMahon on live television. <laughs> so that should be interesting. And the Thunderdome will be live for the very first time. They did a big test yesterday with fans. Apparently went off fine, so they're going to launch it tonight live. We have AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental title. We have Nakamura and Cesaro versus Grand Metalik and Lince Dorado in a tag team title match. And we have a Big E versus Sheamus. Saturday, AEW Television, FTR versus Private Party, Elite versus Dark Order, the finals of the Women's Tag Team Tournament, Darby Allen will be in action, Lucha Brothers, Butcher and Blade versus Natural Nightmares and Jurassic Express, and Cody versus Brody for the TNT title. For TakeOver, we have a ladder match. Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream for the vacant NXT North American title. We have Io Shirai versus Dakota Kai, as we talked about, for the NXT women's title. I still feel that Io's being called up and Dakota's going to win and it's going to be some swerve that nobody saw coming because she's been booked so horribly. Adam Cole, Pat McAfee. Keith Lee versus Karrion Cross for the NXT title. And for some reason, in a number one contenders match for the NXT tag team titles, we have Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza facing Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch, who have been on singles losing streaks, and Fandango and Tyler Breeze, who were beaten on the show this past Wednesday night in a tag team match. <laughs> Clearly no ratings here, no rankings in NXT. And Finn Balor will be facing Timothy Thatcher in an angle that was set up on national television, but they didn't announce the match on national television. They announced it on social media. Then we have SummerSlam. We have the Street Profits facing Andrade and Angel Garza for the Raw Tag Team titles. We have Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton for the WWE title. Who, by the way, Randy Orton did a conference call for the show today. I think it was today or yesterday. But he said, and I absolutely believe that this is true. He said that in the angle that he did with Ric Flair... And you'll be stunned to hear this, but it, I, I mean, I don't doubt this for one second. Ric Flair was never supposed to say anything. He was supposed to stand there and say a couple of things under his breath. But then Randy claims that he took the mic and he just cut that promo. He went into business for himself. I mean, can you imagine... And it, but but I can because it's happened so many times. Having Flair out there and not scripting him to say anything. Now, the only thing that makes me doubt this even a little bit is without Flair's promo, why do they hug? So I, I don't know what I don't know what it was supposed to be without Flair's promo. But anyway, that's what he said. And I mean, I don't doubt for one second the possibility that Flair was scripted to not say anything, because that's what they do. 